Well, so you are, we think, the only chief engineer to have engineered a car of the year winner as well as an SUV of the year winner. Wow. Um, which is quite a feat. It's, um, <laughs> it's quite an honor. <laughs> I'm the chief engineer of the Escalade IQ and IQL, and I also still am the chief engineer of the Hummer EV. This is such a neat thing. And you get really spoiled when you get in and put your foot on the brake and the door closes. Yeah. Because I'll jump into a Hummer and I'm sitting there with my foot on the brake and I'm like, oh wait, this is that old fashioned, I gotta close it myself. Yeah, yeah, I, wait, I have to close my oh, well, own Yeah, car come on, where's, like, I, mean, yeah. Yeah, do you know I need I a door closer. <laughs> It was very crazy um, when I was, uh, it was explained I was going to be leaving the Camaro and go over to help EVs. Um, was that a shock? Big shock. <laughs> big shock. Um, I actually had a conversation with Mark Royce about it and um, it was time to put the priority on making EVs exciting. Uh, no offense to bolts and volts, um, but if we were going to grow our EV strategy and the strategy that Mary had laid out about our role in uh, zero, 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 um, we needed to really put our focus on the EVs. And, and Mark is the person who saved the Hummer name, and he had it in his mind that he wanted to do a battery electric Hummer. Um, so the, uh, you know, I could, have, I could have moped and said, maybe I should retire, I'm the Camaro guy, I got you know, a garage full at home and so on, but you don't really get that many chances, generally, in, in life to, to start over again. And so, uh, that's, that's how we kind of got motivated that, hey, I get this opportunity to be part of the, the ground zero of GM moving to an EV world. And um, the team for Hummer was handpicked. And actually beyond that, the team for the battery electric trucks was handpicked because of um, their ability to understand how we develop vehicles, but develop them fast and not afraid to, um, to try new things. We had the bet mentality that um, things like uh, two pizza lunch, two pizza meetings, if, if you couldn't feed people in the room with two pizzas, you had too many people there. Fail fast and fix it fast. 24-hour uh, rule. You, you could discuss something and go out and learn about it, but you had to come back in 24 hours and make a decision. Quick decision making. Autonomy, push the decision making down to the lower levels of the team and don't have everything go up to be pre-review, pre-review, then, then all of a sudden you get to an executive level and make a decision. In order to go fast, we, we did the entire battery electric truck architecture that way. Um, it, it, we tried to act as a startup company. Um, we came over and sat our engineers with our design team. Um, little things like that that take time out of your day um, to, to, to move fast. You know, the team lived over here at the, at the design studio. Um, understood what the mission was. Um, the, the IQ was meant for um, style conscious, the ones that want to be first. When a new technology comes out, they want to be first to try it. So I don't EV is not new, but it's, it's new in the Cadillac world in a luxury SUV. And the styling of the IQ has more sweeping roof line. Uh, the mission that we had from a styling standpoint was to not make it seem like a big SUV, that it was a luxury SUV, you know, styled for for those that are, are trendsetters. Um, and I think we accomplished that. The, the, the sweeping roof line, um, we, we uh, if you can, just to give an analogy, the same battery is a 24 mod battery that's in the Hummer. Right. Um, and that's 355 roughly miles range. Yeah. Um, this is 460. And how do you do that? Well, it's a narrower track than the Hummer. So this, we call this the narrow track um, right. version of the electric trucks. Um, so that helps the overall arrow with a lower CDA, but the, we exceeded our drag and our um, CD targets for this uh, way beyond w what they were as a, as a, a 0.34, yeah. um, and we're at a 0.32, and that you know, just helps enable the range. Um, so yeah. the, again, the sweeping roof line really helps enable the, the aerodynamics of the vehicle. We have the underbody strakes and so on that also help yeah. really put a focus on 
maximizing the mileage out of that 24 mod battery versus what Hummer did. And that's not really a that's not really a butt hauler. You know, the Hummer that's more has a different purpose. This is going to be yeah. the family vehicle. So to get that 460, we really focused on aero. Yeah. Yeah. We are now a luxury SUV that if you're in Detroit, you can take your family to Chicago. You don't have to stop and charge. Yeah. Or you can go to Florida on three charges. I mean, it's, it's something that now there is no excuse why you would not want to consider an electric SUV and, and a luxury SUV like uh, Escalade. And I mentioned they've been in, Escalade's been around for uh, uh, over 25 years and we've sold over a million of them. So it is a world recognized luxury SUV and um, I think the IQ and IQL is a perfect addition to the family. I mean, when we set out to do things like an Escalade IQ, we, we sit in a room with the whole team and say, what, what do you want to read about when you look backwards after we're in production? And it always comes up, Motor Trend of the Year, because we've all seen the calipers our whole lives, anybody in the auto industry. And, to be able to um, be part of a team or even acknowledge um, as a influencer in the industry or whatever the, it may be, um, to be part of that and actually put your hands on a, a, some hardware. I mean, it's kind of like Stanley Cup for the auto industry. And, uh, you know, I would say there are a few hundred people that have a picture of themselves with the calipers. It was pretty special. Very humbled and excited that we can now say that we're the Motor Trend SUV of the year. This one's different because um, uh, the, the passion behind the team um, is not different, but um, the Cadillac, m myself learning Cadillac, I had a little exposure to the CT4 uh, when I had Camaro, um, so I, I sort of understood Cadillac is different, and Cadillac has a, has a whole different structure of meetings, of approvals, of consistency. There are people that their role is to make sure that no matter what Cadillac you get into, the customer feels the same, whether it's a, a, a CT4 or a Black Wing or an Escalade Ice or an Escalade EV. And I mean, the, the attention to detail to respect the Cadillac brand uh, and the legacy that it has, I, you really feel that um, there is a priority at General Motors to um, earn the Escalade crest and to, to take that back to maybe where it, it originally started was it used to be named as the standard of the world and, and you can feel it, you can see it. There's definitely a, a family environment of Cadillac that um, no matter which team you talk to, they all have the same mission as you want to earn that crest on the front and so that's different and I think the passion that goes into making sure you know we don't go do anything necessarily specific for the EV Escalade um, that you don't go and talk to your other counterparts to say hey is this going to progress the brand so it's very it's, it's different for me it was a good learning experience and uh, I, I really enjoy it. So is is this going to be your last job at GM <laughs> or, are you gonna, or is Rice going to shock you yet again? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 we talked earlier, I don't really consider this a job. I, I think I have the luckiest job in the world being a chief engineer. It's an aspiration of any engineer that comes to GM anyway, in my experience. Um, the fact that I was able to achieve it for so many years. I've been a chief engineer for 26 years. Um, I have um, bosses above me that haven't even been at GM that long. So I've been very lucky and I think I stay because I love it. I love the challenges. I've been given some great opportunities um, in my career as a chief and before that. Um, and you know, I, 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 would, I wouldn't do anything different if I started all over again. And then how long do I go? It's still fun. If, if it's not fun to get up and come in, you know, I'm, I'm 63, um, but I still get up at four in the morning. I do my stretches, I come in excited, thinking about what can we do different today and how can we progress the company today. And as long as I'm able to do that um, and they're interested in me doing that I'll, and my badge works, I'll come in. I'll come in every day. <laughs>